Hello, welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Shushma Singh. Today we start unit 14 political violence and let us introduce the unit. Political violence in most of the modern societies is the result of social tensions which develop in them due to different reasons. Normally, political violence is directed against the state because the state is considered the chief source of injustice and repression. As a result, different sections of society are taking recourse to violence to solve their problems. They are following violent methods because the state has failed to secure regular obedience from the people. Violence is a purposeful political action to register protest of certain sections of society against wrong policies of the government. In modern times, revolution as a form of political violence is carried out to change the form of government and to transform social structure. Political violence is a deliberate political activity which has enormous ethical implications. It is pointed out by Aristotle that men do not revolt because they catch the cold. There are serious moral issues involved in it. Therefore, he said that the owner enjoyed by a political assassin cannot be compared with that of an ordinary murder. The supporters of the political violence justify it on moral grounds. They argue that they are fighting against bad government and for a just cause. The opponent of violence condemn terrorist activities for acting against the lawful constituted government. Hence, one country's terrorist is a freedom fighter for another country. Our next topic is meaning of political violence. Political violence is a collective violence against action of a group of people against the government to highlight its discontent. It may be a protest against a particular policy of government. It may be used to remove a particular government from power or it may be taken recourse to for a change of political system. Aggression and violence have been a part of human history since long because men take to violence and aggression to secure things that they did not possess or to preserve things that they possessed. Normally, political violence is directed against the state, its property and men who manage its institutions Political violence may begin with writing or mass demonstrations, but it is always possible that it assumes different forms. Aristotle was the first political scientist who discussed the nature and causes of political disorder. He pointed out that the change in the balance of social forces in a particular state was responsible for political disorder. The Indian political thinkers Kotilya or Chanakya was of the opinion that change in the attitude of a, one's own people is revolt. It results from a wrong policy of government and 
immodest behavior of the king. Thus, since ancient times, the political violence had caused disorder in the state and in modern times, the problems of political violence has become more marked and complex. Now our next topic is violence and state. We have seen our discussion that political violence is largely directed against the state and its various institutions. Therefore, it is an old as the state itself. Violence is in it built in the institution of the state. It has the monopoly of coercive power in its hands. The state exercises this power with the help of its repressive agencies such as the army, the police, jails and courts. It can punish people who do not obey its orders and who disturb law and order. The state claims authority to rule and it secures authority with the help of legal sanctions or popular sanctions. When the state exercises power, it is entitled to use legally sanctioned violence to enforce its order. More often than that, not the state uses coercive methods which are not sanctioned by law. The degree of use of violence differs from state to state because ultimately it depends on the ability of the state to secure compliance of its order without using coercion. Modern states are increasingly using violence methods because they want to bring about political integration of the country as well as to hasten the process of economic development. Our next topic is political violence and political integration. The state is an institution of society and its prime function is to bring about social and political integration of the people. Ancient and medieval states allowed coexistence of multiple autonomous political authorities. The modern state wants to establish its total authority over people and the territory under its jurisdiction. In every state, there exist distinct cultural and ethnic groups, and it is a desire of every state authority to amalgamate these cultural groups into a single political unit under a single central authority. Historically, this process has, with a very few exceptions, been one of the extreme violence which has varied from the physical murder of a whole sections of cultural minority to their forced deportation, their forced religious and cultural conversion and large-scale population transfers. This violence has been exercised by states on their own citizens or those it claims are its citizens and violence has been employed as an instrument of policy. The purpose of this policy was to extend state's political authority upon those who for one reason or another do not accept it authority as legitimate. The modern state was built upon the demise of the federal and the tribal communities, which were autonomous entities. Once this integration was achieved in West Europe, attempts were made there to control the arbitrary exercises of 
state violence by agencies of the state such as the army and the police and their immediate controllers kings ministers generals and bureaucrats at present most of the countries of asia and africa are undergoing this process therefore politics in these states is the most violent our next topic is political violence and the process of economic development historically we have seen that the state exercised violence in the early phase of economic development when there was a transition from a handicraft system based on agriculture to a relatively labor intensive factory system during this period a great majority of population suffered because of this change the state used extremely violent methods to curb agrarian revolts of the farmers who were agitating against unjust policies of the government it used its authority to protect private industries by curbing the rights of the workers and by declaring trade union illegal for example during the captain's swing troubles in rural england in 1830 when agricultural machines were destroyed animals killed crops destroyed and bricks burnt the state arrested 1976 farmers deported 480 one farmers and executed 18 farmers thus transportation imprisonment the lash and even death were the lot of those agitating against the inhumanity of the early factory system the process of economic development both in the planned and unplanned economies involved the exercise of force because the new economy required capital formation by curbing the consumption levels of the working classes thus the attempts to achieve the higher economic standards for certain classes of society produced violent reactions from those deprived classes who suffered in short in the process of political integration and economic development the level of political violence is extremely high the state has considerably greater potential of internal violence than its citizens here we want to wind up today's lecture thank you so much for your attention